that's uh, that's out. And then, yeah, um, uh, only other thing to, I want to touch on is uh, so we're we're playing Mass Effect three. We're you know we're picking up. I have up heard momentum. And I've heard some things come down the pipe. We have currently completed Leviathan. Okay. So, so um, knowledge has been shared. I want to talk about... That's cool. We're going to talk about that in just one second. Hey. But I want to talk to you about Kai Pussy Lang. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Who you must defeat to become Big Pussy. Is that letter just the f- <laughs> worst? It is It is the worst writing in Mass Effect in like 400 words. It so, is crazy. The idea that there's an entire novel you can read about this guy. I, I like my it. F- <laughs> I can't imagine what's happening page to page if it's written from his perspective it's intense oc he pisses in like anderson's room like just to do it is it told from his brain yeah there's large portions of it told from his perspective okay i like this is disco elysium levels of like narrative prose that i i want i want to experience like i can't imagine a letter like that being the 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 taste for an entire book that's f- this, this is a character that like breaks into Anderson's room, and I think he pisses in his flower pot. His flower, spends, I like, heard about. Yeah, and eating like cereal. spends like a bunch of time eating his cereal to like, yeah, I'm so up, I'm so inside his life, man. He can't do nothing. And it's dude, just like, like I said it in the moment, but it's like, how can the highs be so high and the lows be so low? Like I don't get it. I can answer that, but not now. Yes, we have, in fact, an answer that is on the docket that is the answer to this question uh, Will that we're going to get into. But it's wild how this fucking game will whiplash you from something so brilliant to just the... At, like, at the time, at the time, did anyone even at the time think it was cool? Like, was there so ever... Because um, it's dated, a- but it's instantly fucking cringe and lame like so troy baker was a big mass effect fan and was like you know he put the feelers out i was like i would love to play mass effect character right and then i watched an interview in which he describes that a character was written for him kai lang was written for him like with the assumption that he would want to voice it and him like reading it out and like it is it is game of thrones final season interview energy like <laughs> he is he is like biz- uh, and this is like a year later yeah. he's visibly trying to yeah. figure out a way to spin it and i think the best he comes up with is like it's not the kind of character I was excited to play, but I was honored to be part of the series. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay, okay. That fu- uh, um, uh, uh, What's her name? Whatever, Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, the, the, I forgot the, the actress, but uh, that face she makes at the table read just... <laughs> and, oh, man. Best ending um, ever, Amelia Clark. Yeah, I I like. It's 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 just such a. It feels as if th- those are the moments where you can feel that thing where it's like every character had its own like writer, not its own writer, but like it had a writer that was responsible for them, you know? Yeah. And like the pieces of the part or the parchment that come together, the patchwork, all the whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. Like someone responsible for Kai Leng was also probably responsible for Arya. I wanna say and- that it's Mac Walters. Okay. Because Mac uh, Walters, um, he was not I don't know if he was even there, but I definitely know he wasn't the lead writer on Mass Effect 1 or 2. That was Drew Carpishan. Um, and Mac Walters and Casey Hudson wrote most of Mass Effect 3. 
Okay. And uh, Mac Walters, uh, like like Kai Lang is his fucking OC, like straight up. Yeah. Um. I you can you can feel that right. You can feel that, and um, at the same time, like it's the same way you can feel that Arya was written for Carrie Ann Moss. And for her to be like, yeah, this cool boss bitch that no one fucks with, yeah, she's gonna love it. She's such a cool character. Oh man, like just the most try-hard, edgy, like badasses that uh, you can possibly imagine, and like they get so much time to do so much nothing, and we keep going back to them and hearing from them in emails and and so everything you're describing about what they thought Troy Baker would like, I see that with Arya and what they were hoping maybe that she would like as well, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm getting a cameo, but I get to play such a cool character that is so important and pivotal and everyone loves them and fuck yeah, it's not an embarrassing, little unimportant person off to the side. It's a so real character up, that goes on an adventure and or is as good as Shepard. So I'm going to raise up my, my hand here because there's a really important distinction. You're doing d some of the DLC. You did Omega. You did Leviathan, right? Now, mm -hmm. these were post-game DLCs. These are actually post-ending change DLC, right? Um, in the main thrust of it, you did um, Thessia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means you're 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 getting there. That's why you're doing the DLC before you go to do the, the final thing, return. right? So... This is this is the point. I've talked to you about this before, but it's actually really important that you cement this in your brain. So the Bioware writing process for many years, for almost every project they ever did, was the lead writer would write the main script or the main outline. And then you'd had character writers and they would write, you know, within the purview of their character. And what would happen is, is all the leads and all the writers would sit in a room, put that shit on the table, and they would go over everything. Mm -hmm. They would go over where, so the plan is to do this planet and this planet. And what do you got for Tally here? What do you got for Garrus here? And then they would all workshop it, right? That was the writing process for the entire series and the DLC that you're playing through now. You are about, once you touch the main game again, you are about to slam into a wall. And that wall is Casey Hudson and Mac Walters have decided to write the rest of the game for you by themselves in their office in Without. like two days and then going this is it to the team N and, this this is what it okay. is gonna be okay and, and it is a wall it is the weirdest thing i've ever seen in a in a in a game you usually can't tell when you're playing a game when the writer changed you can hear the dialogue gets different, not necessarily bad, but it's different. The so it's tone... not it's not that it changed so much as it is like it is no longer the product. It's no of longer collaborative. The same process exactly, which yeah. sounds eerily similar to D and D winging it once they were out of George R. 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 Martin scripts. Well, I can't comment on that. Um. So, what do you think of Leviathan? You found out the big secret. Okay. I fully, and I have to literally go back and watch the footage again. Yeah. Um, I need to properly understand the, the, the conversation. I'm having somebody break it down for me right now, actually, so we can go over any sticking points. Um, all I can say is, as it was happening, all I could feel was, what the fuck happened to that first conversation I had with Sovereign that put the fear of God in me? I don't know what, like, how do I put, um, so Mass Effect, every, every problem with the Reapers in Mass Effect, always goes back to the first conversation with Sovereign. And I don't know what the problem is. Is it that they they wrote that without something planned? Right? Was that the was that the problem or was it that they built up a, an unknowable threat 
and then decided that we were going to know it. So we got a great uh, comment. Uh, we got a great message that came in because this was a because we were discussing this as we were going through it, and I was kind of like, I was kind of like, I don't always hate finding out how the timeline came to be. I don't always hate finding oh. out more because, and me and Reggie both were people who were like, you know what, we didn't even mind season two of 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 Korra. Right, where yeah. they explain the avatar system. Yeah, sure, oh. it was magic. It was, uh... but if you don't do it in a way that works well, then you get midichlorians, right? And and I just I'm sitting there and as I'm hearing about the 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 race and then the why and then the reapers were made and then the and then I'm just like I this all of this just takes away any of that awe and fear and like excitement i had for sovereign establishing itself as effectively i i, I use the word like lovecraftian but oh, i don't know if it's a cuttlefish for a reason it's it's un it feels like an unknowable machine god it really they are really squids does for a reason like um and so, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to pull it up here because uh, after we were talking about this, yeah, uh, KYH9 sent in a message saying, uh, Mass Effect is a great example of why I think Eldritch topics are dumb to have in most stories because they're cool for being unknowable. And in Mass Effect 1, they didn't bother coming up with a motivation for the Reapers. But AAA audiences want answers. So you get this. It's like you're pretend you're interpreting DLC correct. You're interpreting the DLC correctly, Wooly. Uh, the issue is that inevitably people want motivations for their villains. Having Lovecraftian horrors as your villains in space operas is a bad idea from the start. Um, there's a fine, there's a thin line between the motivations are unknowable and they have none. Uh, I lied. There is no line. They're the same thing, and you can't have a three game series long going before people start to realize that they are. I wildly disagree with that comment, and so, I will use the 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 um direct. So, like, Mass Effect had a perfect, perfect example of what not to do mm -hmm. from their primary inspiration. Because the Reapers are literally Star Trek's Borg. Resistance is futile. Right. We will add your technological and biological distinctiveness to our own. Um, alongside a handful of other... Uh, uh, uh overlapping race similarities there apparently i saw a little meme doing the one-to-one -one, because it's like obviously the reapers are the borg but then it's like yes and and that uh, that then follows that the krogan are the um um klingons klingons the asari are the vulcans the volus yep. are the ferengi yep uh the turians are the cardassians they didn't try very hard <laughs> the Quarians are the Bajorans. The Salarians yeah, are no, the Romulans. Batarians are Andorians. Edie is Data. Protheans yeah. are Founders. Drell are Betazoids. And Hanar are Trill. Yeah, they, <laughs> they did not try very hard to hide their influences. Right? Um, th that's fine, right? But here's what happened in Star Trek over the course of a couple series. So in TNG, the Borg are, first of all, they fly in cubes, which is totally fucking weird. It's aggressively strange for the setting, right? Mm -hmm. And they are an omnipresent mega consciousness that like dwarfs a single individual's understanding, right? They're cool. Their first uh, fucking uh, encounter, I don't think they even have a goddamn name. They're just some horrible nightmare from out in space. Yeah, and they're from the, the, the old, like, fucking Series 1, right? The original uh, uh, with, no, the, with no, they don't look... No, no, they're from TNG. They oh, have I no thought... presence in Series 1. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay, you know the clip where Picard and Riker shoot that guy and his head fucking explodes and a bunch of bugs shoot out? Right, yeah. Okay, that was... Uh, writing draft one of the Borg and they were like nah techno zombies that's cooler 
So they became techno zombies in the season two. Oh, um, that's what that's what it was, right? Yeah, there right, was an okay. original version for So okay. TNG, they are unknowable. They are a massive fuck nightmare threat that show up like maybe once a season, and then they delve into what happens to you when you get disconnected and what a fucking horrible nightmare that is. Cool. Okay, this all fits well with the unknowable in a a setting that's about knowing, right? It works. Mm -hmm. Then in Star Trek First Contact, they create the Borg Queen, which is an individual who controls the Borg. And this is the worst decision ever. This is the worst decision ever. And it was made so they could have scenes of like data, like jerking off with like his new fucking flesh dick. Mm -hmm. And so that a card had a person to kick into an acid bath because uh patrick stewart wanted to do, do cool stunts mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. this was like a this was not a story decision this was like an acting directing mm-hmm. decision then you get to voyager and voyager goes into exhaustive fucking detail about every single thing about the borg and the borg queen becomes a long-running character in like a dozen episodes and it sucks mm-hmm. it fucking sucks dude it sucks so fucking bad. And then let me guess, they spit you back out to the present day and then you have to look at this what used to be intimidating threat and now it's just who the fuck cares. Well, remember, right? I don't know if you know what the finale of Voyager is, but the finale of Voyager is that Janeway from the future comes back and like kills the Borg. Okay. And like just has that. has yeah. like like a bunch of action shots of like a Voyager from 20 years in the future, just icing like a thousand Borg ships and fuck. And that, that, that fucking, that antagonist is now ruined. It's like overtly ruined done. So, so the, so after I read that comment, it was interesting because it's like the unknowable is so good at buying you in on a premise, right? And uh, I kind of I went off uh, on a fucking little rant about it when I was just initially reacting to it because I was just thinking of like, what am I feeling right now? Right. And I'm like, I'm feeling the way I felt when I was like, um, what the fuck is this Gantz man doing in the ball? And why are they teleporting dead people? And why are they have to fight the aliens? What what is the possible reasoning you could have behind this? And nine times out of ten. The person making the story is like, well, I don't fucking know, lol. But hey, yeah. cool, cool fights though, right? Um, which is why, uh, and, and so like a lot of the time, it's like, oh, you kind of had an idea that you had something that was like, oh, we're gonna buy you in on a on a wild premise, and you're like, what are the answers? I want to know, and you can string yeah. that along for a long time. But if you don't have a fucking plan, it's all for nothing. It's all for shit. Uh, the unknowable tech god how do you even begin to fight them i'm like in my brain i'm like obviously you're gonna need a macguffin but that aside like how cool is can or is it gonna be to find out more about them and and this is a similar feeling to what i got from the geth at the end of ma2 when legion Mm -hmm. was kind of setting up them in the fucking attican traverse like from beyond the veil the perseus veil they're count they're countless their numbers cannot be understood by any other race and they're Mm -hmm. just chilling there you've been picking off little scrap skirmishes with the heretics the mad the fucking insane ones the The real death asian error that made them think that this was a good idea yeah the real geth are just observing and chilling and off Mm -hmm. to their own thing because they've like they've faced their more their 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 creator dilemma and they're like trying Mm -hmm. to work it's such an interesting prospect right okay um so back to Voyager for a second. Okay. Voyager ends in 2001, which is right before Mass Effect starts getting written. Mm. Because Mass Effect came out in fucking 2007 and it took like four or five years. So like Voyager's ending was fresh and everyone on that project's a massive fucking Star Trek dweeb. So they knew that their unknowable tech god can be ruined by over explanation. Like that was all on the page. Yeah, and if you're a fan of Star Trek, you're avid. You're if you're on if you're working on Mass Effect, you're probably an avid Star Trek fan at that point in time. The the reason the the fucking first game has film grain is so it looks like TNG. Yeah, 
um as and the the race dis the comparison we just made like it's it's you know and to be fair like no other game that uh well rather so that what they did with kotor was so fucking cool that it made sense to be like what if we made our own that didn't have to be star yeah. wars related right like that's, that's exactly just, what that is that's just a brilliant move to be because like you have the talent to make a space world that is that compelling and they did the fucking buy-in in the Mass Effect 1 world with the Citadel and the idea that all the future tech you have was mm -hmm. given to you by, like, a malevolent but omnipotent race that exists and they're a threat, but you, you rely on them, but they all... Like, mm -hmm. the whole thing, you know? Um, and I like tell just... you the exact Star Trek episodes every one of those concepts oh. is taken from. Okay, okay, every I... One. I believe it. I mean, you know, that that Star Star Trek is is a fucking institution that's been around that's visited all these concepts, right? Um, but when it comes down to so that comment and then replying to like the 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 what I think when I'm looking at the 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 Leviathan re revelations, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want to just hand wave and say stop trying to explain away the magic stop trying to explain the unknowable right. because it can be done well right totally. it's just it takes like real time to craft a fucking narrative that is strong and what i point to in my example is why the fuck are we stuck in these walls and why do these giants want to eat us i don't fucking know this sucks yeah oh shit Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah, you can do it. Basement, it can be done extremely well. Totally. Right? And it can be planned out in a way where everything that every time we zoom out, instead of making the magic go go away, it just increases your fucking suspense and and mm -hmm. and how invested you are in the setting because um you recognized the pieces that like would attract the 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 audience to the like the, the the threat to begin with and then you never forgot th what those were um what we're so dealing a... with now with the reapers even before mm -hmm. we had this leviathan backstory reveal we were blasting them left and right and we took on a, a what, what we called a reaperito mm -hmm. <laughs> right a little mini one and uh harbinger is lame as fuck I, oh, and i gotta stop you right there the moment that the Reapers are become unsalvageable, genuinely, it doesn't feel like it at the time, but it is, is the first time you hear the, an eldritch being beyond your comprehension say the phrase, does this hurt you, Shepard? Right, 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 right. Now, I'm fully able to go harbinger sucks sovereign's cool i can go yeah this is a lame asshole right he's petty and shitty turns out he's one of the f earliest and most powerful but shut up of course um, he is whatever uh it's also you know, really upsetting because harbinger should be named sovereign and sovereign should be named harbinger because of the roles that they play yes yeah. i agree <laughs> but regardless um it's be fine because Sovereign is the better name and the better character gets the better name. Uh, I uh, I look at all of that and I'm just, yeah, I'm just left with that feeling of like, if you're going to crack it open, if you're going to tell us what we want to know or scratch the itch, so to speak, it better be like, it just, it better capture what we fell in love with to begin with here and, and follow through on that, right? Um, oh. And even if it's like, like I'm trying to remember, but like there's another version of this with um did you ever actually watch uh, Firefly? Yeah, I did. Okay. So I liked Firefly yeah, yeah, uh, okay, back in the day. Go, right. Yeah. Right. And Firefly is great. And then um 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 what's it call it? The movie came out uh yeah. after that. And I remember when it was like the Reavers were the thing in that, right? Yeah. And they you that's the threat of the franchise, and then you're like, it's the mystery, it's the unknowable, it's the fucking zombie space shit. Serenity, there we yeah. go. Um, and then it gets around to eventually cracking open, like, what the Reavers are and how that happened. And it's like, oh, That's really okay. depressing and interesting. Yeah. And, like, I was kind of like, once we find out, is it going to ruin it? And it's like, no, it didn't. No. It it it, 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 it changes it from from threat and, and unknowing to uh, tragedy. Yes. 
Um, but and and the and it's but that required understanding what we thought they were, keeping that in mind, and then building on top of that, not just mm -hmm. throwing it out entirely and replacing it with this now. Um, which again. This is downloadable content, which is possibly missable. Okay, this, in the this is where I need scheme. to stop you. This is a really important part because you're gonna need to. We're gonna need to sit down after you're you're done with like the main ending, because there's a lot of bits and pieces that are that are combining in very strange ways, and it's why talking about going through the Mass Effect series like now when it's completely done compared to its reality when it came out, you have to remember there are two things going on with the Leviathan DLC. The first of which is the Leviathan DLC is post-ending anger attempt to add backstory to a decision with the writing that people didn't like. Right? Say that again? Say that again? So Leviathan's DLC, the writing in it, is post-ending anger band-aid. Hey. They're trying to smooth over writing decisions that you haven't gotten to yet okay. with more information and go, see, it wasn't pulled out of our ass. It was kind of here all along. Okay. And it's, it's, it's like you're getting the backstory on something you haven't seen. It's a little strange the way that that plays out, right? The second of which is that the grand reveal that the Reapers are in fact an AI built to figure out why AIs go nuts that in fact went nuts is a cool little thing that this super advanced race made the same mistake as it's like slave races because they were so up their own ass. That's okay. That's appreciated. And the reason why that's there is that I don't, you, you did not read the mass effect one book and that's fine. That's fine. Okay. But the important thing to note is that the first paragraph of the mass effect one book talks about the series ostensible thesis statement, because it talks about why geth are against the law. And it talks about how AI is the largest crime that's ever existed. Mm -hmm. right and it goes into like that, that's the whole first chapter of the mass effect book because geth are your primary antagonist mm -hmm. right and so they go with that and this is kind of a pivot back to that because the writer who wrote that fucking left <laughs> was that the same writer that was responsible for them for writing the geth backstory in two that then wanted yes and Drew also set up the dark energy plot line, which is not going to go anywhere. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I got the so Drew's that gone, as well. So they mm -hmm. pivot back to the original idea. But here's the problem. Mass Effect 2 happened. You and already started to put now. the pieces down. You started down the <laughs> pathway. Oh, no. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It is. It is a strange, strange cobbled together series of pieces oh god it just uh, you know you're looking at how the fucking you know well fuck the star wars new trilogy right like the same idea of just like wait where are we going no actually never mind wait but what if no -uh. oh that's interesting no we're not doing it okay well then i guess we're gonna mm, you know and then it, it's like it's like that that the, when you start down a pathway and then that could be potentially interesting, but then you swerve off because someone else is taking the, the, the mantle over now. Like, you're not gonna fucking... It's not compelling if you just swerve it somewhere that we didn't see it coming because it's like... Uh, what, what was it that... Uh, cha no, was it, what show was it that changed their ending because people figured it out? Or whatever? Well, um, to some degree, Mass Effect 3. No, but there was something else <laughs> like that. It was There was uh, something else where... Anyway... Like oh people, oh. people were um, um, figuring out the writing. The people were, were clued into what was going to happen, so they, the writers decided to change the actual it wasn't Game show. Of Thrones, was it? it wasn't Game of Thrones. It was another Hold show. On, I'm and turn off emote only mode so that someone can fucking actually. Yeah, answer yeah, yeah. This yeah. That was a thing that happened, and uh, everyone's like, "Oh, that explains how it." Westworld. 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 <laughs> Westworld. Everyone figured out where Westworld was going. So time to take the thing that is predictable, but makes sense given what we've set up 
and throw it all out because we want to hey. keep it unpredictable or whatever. And someone else comes uh. in and brings their vision instead of like trying to like follow through, you know? So anyway, so, um, uh, the last thing that I want to say is like, keep in mind the, the writing dynamic, like collaborative to personal is going to hit you pretty soon. Um, and, and remember that, um, planet stories were often written by individuals. Yes, yes, as our character stories. Yes. Right? So you're going to run into a situation in which the person who wrote a story for a planet did not get to know what the game's ending was, which is going to which is going to end up with what I'm going to call a writing mistake. Okay. Okay. So where the, the game starts to argue with itself. Right. So let's say there's four different writers. One of them is G and G is writing everything in King's Landing and then yeah. R is writing everything in the north. The and yeah. R is writing everything at the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then M is writing everything in Esos. Yeah. Um and then none of them knew where what was those gonna happen in the other locations? Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. And then it turns out that like when one of them has to move locations, the story just doesn't make any sense anymore. And the the story's theme starts arguing with itself. Okay. 